You've had very depressing childhood where you wanted to commit suicide at one point in time. My teachers kept on saying you are useless, you are uh, you are good for nothing and I started to believe that these words I just became a person with no talent with no future and by 16 the doctors had given me six months to live but the turning point I would say came about was um, when my mother asked me to go to a camp organized by the church I heard the audible voice of Jesus Christ you also hold the world record for uh, being the fastest man ever to visit 245 countries. Yeah. It's one memorable encounter of yours on your global journey. They said, well, 80% uh, of the country has come to see you. Prepare to be inspired by the extraordinary individual, a musical maestro, Guinness world record holder, and world-renowned artist. Benny's remarkable journey includes visiting almost every country, composing 4,000 songs, and crafting his own musical instrument. Please join me in welcoming an extraordinary personality, Benny Prasad. Thank you very much, Benny, for making it. Uh, good to see you here. Thank How you are you so today? Much. I'm doing very well, thank you. Great. Uh, so, uh, I would say I'm starting this episode on a very negative note. You've had very depressing childhood where you wanted to commit suicide at one point in time. And then you went for this extraordinary journey, right? Uh, we would like to understand more about it and then probably we jump on to the further questions I have in my hand. Yeah. Please. You know, um, normally I don't tell this whole story yeah. uh, generally because of uh, different factors. Yes. But uh, my journey uh, as a child, I was the first born in the family. It went really well. I was a celebrated child. And I was moved schools in my second standard. And that is where the downfall started, actually. Okay. Is I was moved from a English medium school to a Hindi medium school because my father worked uh, as an aerospace scientist uh, in NL. Now, this move had my teachers failed me in my second standard, I would have started my journey from my first standard. Oh, but okay. my teachers showed compassion yeah. and they made a mistake by helping me write my entrance paper. Okay. And as a result, from my first language, which was English, suddenly became Hindi as my first language okay. without a foundation. Okay. So from second standard onwards, I was not able to cope up with the Kendra Vidyalaya school. And I kept on failing and failing and failing because I did not have a proper foundation. Mm. And as a result, my teachers kept on saying, you are useless, you are, uh, you are good for nothing. And I started to believe that these words um, are true. And once you start believing those words, it becomes a reality. And uh, very soon, I started to uh, get into depression because of the circumstances around me, mainly in my academic failure. And with that, also my failure with my passion, which was sports. Mm -hmm. is uh, uh, Sports kept me going. I was very passionate. Every morning at 4.30 or 5, I was to get up and run and uh, build up my stamina. But at the age of 13, I was hit by a javelin. Oh. Uh, it was an accident that happened in the school field where I was just busy getting ready for my final run and Raju was throwing and unfortunately I stepped into the javelin zone and the same time the javelin came and hit my spinal cord and I was thrown to the ground and it's a miracle I survived the javelin hit but uh, I had to end all my sporting activities. So mm. I just became a person with no talent with no future and by 16 the doctors had given me six months to live because of medical complications and putting all these things together yeah. I just lost the desire to live mm -hmm. and uh, on top of that being a failure to my family and my school I thought what is the point of living in this world? <coughs> okay so with this do you <coughs> think the culture of shaming the weak and appreciating the good has changed uh, in these days? These days, there's a lot more changes. But when I grew up, 
you know, especially in the Indian educational system, you appreciate in secret yeah. and you humiliate in public. That's true. So I was humiliated very, very badly, both the teachers and the students. Mm -hmm. And uh, bullying was very much common uh, when I grew up, especially when you are a failure. But mm. now things have slowly started to change, but it is still, yeah. we are still not there completely. Yeah. What was that, you know, igniting flame which kept you going in those tough times, mm -hmm. I would say? Uh, to be honest, um, you know, the journey was only going down and down and down for me yeah. because I tried many factors. Like, for example, uh, I tried music. And on the first day, the guitar teacher told me, don't come back again. He said, you have no qualities of music because I was tone deaf and beat deaf. So educationally, I was written off. Sports wise, now I have a problem. And then now musically, I was written off. I tried to join the gangsters also. Okay. And, uh, you know, normally if you don't fit into the good company, yeah. at least you have the bad company. But... I was so bad that uh, I didn't even fit into the bad company, actually. <laughs> now, because of asthma, yeah. I only had 40% lungs. Oh, okay. Now, with that, I cannot smoke because that affects my lungs. And the smell of alcohol would trigger asthma. So all my alcoholic friends, and my you can't commit smokers, any crime because you can't yeah, run. Exactly. <laughs> so when I tried to join them, they said, you become a liability because you have to fight, but we have to go and save you. So <laughs> you can't be part of us. So... Every place mm. I had uh, a no value in the society. And where was this? Uh, this all in Bangalore. All, all, in all Bangalore. of it happened in Bangalore, actually. Okay. Okay. And um, so for me, uh, uh, in, in terms of an experience, yeah. everything was only going down and down and down. So nothing kept me motivated. And that's why at 16, yeah. I had uh, come to a point saying enough is enough. I don't think I can ever come out of this uh, shell of going downwards. And so might as well, before I reach a point of completely uh, being called useless, i rather kill myself. Mm. And uh, But the turning point, I would say, came about was um, when my mother asked me to go to a camp organized by the church. And um, and I just went there just to please my mother. Honestly, it was not something that I was looking for or nothing like that. I was I was just at the point where my goal was, I stole my father's camera and the goal was to sell that, get the money to buy a train ticket to Goa and to kill myself. I don't know why Goa, oh, but okay. that was my plan. But on the second day, I heard the audible voice of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was shocked because and I said... Was it? In the church? Uh, it was at this camp, this ah, okay. youth camp. Okay. And uh, I said, why? Because Jesus said, even though you are called useless, I want you. I can transform your life and make you a new person. Mm. I said, why? What do you get out of me? You know, I'm going to die in six months medically. I have I've failed in every aspect of my life. Mm. But for the first time, I heard a positive voice saying that uh, I can change your life and make you a new person. And that was the turning point for me. First thing to believe that there is hope for change. And that's why I tell people never give up on hope. Getting on to the other side of it, of yours, I see an innovator in you because mm -hmm. you designed your own music instrument. And uh, that's called, I think, Banter. Yes. Which is the first world's first bongo guitar. Yeah. So how did that idea came and mm -hmm. how did you crafted your own uh, instrument if you can just yeah. was, uh, make us understand that sure yeah yeah there was a, an arts gathering about okay. 400 artists from all over the world had come to Los Angeles okay and as I was performing on the stage over there this was in the year 2003 mm -hmm. and uh, you know when I performed on the stage there was a lady who came up to me her name is Julie Spence from Australia and she came and said, Benny, you have a very unique style of playing the guitar. And 2004 is the Olympic Games in Greece. And she was heading the cultural stages. And she said, are you interested to come and perform on the cultural stages at the Olympic Games? I was like, wow, I would love to. Yeah. And, um, and then she said, but the, the challenge is that we just want you to come as an entertainer 
and uh, not as a person who's going to inspire people, you know. Oh, okay. And for me, <clears throat> seeing this journey of life, I've learned that I want to inspire people more than entertain people. <laughs> Mm -hmm. from a very early stage that has been my motto is that uh, entertainment is there but that is not my end goal my end goal is if I can inspire somebody to choose to live to choose to dream big uh, I've achieved something much more than just being an entertainer mm -hmm. and uh, so when they told me that I can't do that yeah. is that's when I prayed and I asked God to help me to design a unique guitar uh, that would attract the athletes as well as the audiences to come and look at the guitar and then ask me questions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how did you come up with this? Right, which and I'm then, asking today. Yes, and then <laughs> I can share my journey and my story. Yeah. And so that is how the idea of uh, designing a guitar with two drums inside came about. And I, I, I believe that it is a divine idea that God gave mm -hmm. with a divine purpose. If I go back and, you know, uh, look at your musical journey, etc., uh, we would like to understand more as to how musical instruments or the music has played a vital role in your life or your personal growth or even the professional growth. Yeah. No, I, I never thought I could be a musician. My brother was a musician. Mm. Uh, my sisters were. And my mother was also an amazing musician. But I was this odd guy in the family who had no musical gifts. You know, there are two technical aspects that is very important for a musician. One is the pitch and the other one is the beat. Yeah. So I was tone deaf, which means I could not sing in tune. And I was beat deaf. I could not clap to the right beat. Oh, okay. So it took a miracle for me to be a musician. At the age of 19 is when I picked up an old broken guitar. I collected broken strings, tied them together, put them on the guitar, and I practiced seven hours every day. And I tell a lot of young people today, it is not the guitar that makes you a musician. You know, the deep inside that passion is more important than whether it is a Yamaha guitar or a Taylor guitar. Or, because today young people think that a guitar company makes you a better guitarist. No. Yeah. Yeah, you know, same thing with the, a good photographer is nothing to do with the company of the camera. Yes, they play a small role. But the way you capture the picture is more important than trying yeah. to look into this. Every day I practiced. And in two months, I became the best musician within my uh, setting there. And that was the start of my musical journey. So the practice and the passion yes. both followed both together. Both are very important. Yeah. And if you have these two, yeah. you can fight against all odds. You also hold the world record for uh, being the fastest man ever to t visit 245 countries. Yeah. Uh, do, you, uh, do you think or do you, do you see people calling you crazy sometimes? Oh, yes, yes. They uh, now, yes, now they respectfully call me crazy. <laughs> but when I started off, uh, yeah. they thought I was really out of my mind. And when did you started this journey? Of yeah. start when you, I mean, when you started traveling. See, my first country was on 15th August 1998 to Sri Lanka. Okay. But it just happened. It was not something that I planned or anything. Plan. And there was a meeting, and somebody asked me if I could join. But my intentional plan of traveling started off in 2002. Okay. And again, I give the credit back to God for, uh, for giving me this idea. Because I ask God, is, uh, see, a lot of my journey has a very spiritual inclination. Now, this does not make me a very spiritually oriented person. Yeah. But I draw a lot of my strength. You know, I, I pray and I, I seek my guidance. And so I asked, uh, one day I asked Jesus, what do you want me to do with my life? And that was a very clear direction saying, I want you to travel to every country by 2010. Mm -hmm. So in the, those eight years? In those eight years. And my whole, the whole thing was, where will I get the money? It's yeah. so expensive to travel. I have an Indian passport. Uh, in those days, you know, now our passport has done extremely well. But right. when I started off, we needed visa for Sri Lanka. That's true. And uh, so it was very difficult to get visas. And But 
God said, I'll provide for you. So I made this a very, very strong financial uh, commitment and a policy in my life, which till today, even the world of finances are, uh, are not able to comprehend. I said, I will never ask for money. I will never borrow money. I will never take a loan from the bank or trust the credit card. Okay. And I told God, you provide for me and I will travel and I will live within my means, mm. whatever it might be. And, uh, and so till today, every concert I've performed, I've never charged. Mm, okay. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I've just, uh, it is a, a journey of miracles, but it's a journey of faithfulness also, God's faithfulness in my life. But my real test started off right at the beginning. See, generally, most of the times when you hear stories, they have a smooth start. Mm. And then you start to hit a few roadblocks. But my roadblock was right at the very, the very, very beginning, beginning yeah. when I first landed in Russia. Yeah, okay. yeah. And uh, in Moscow, they asked me for a bribe of uh, $50. And uh, my concert was going to be in the evening and uh, people have come to pick me up. But... Uh, you know, I, I tell people, being an Indian and being a Christian, my principle is that I will never give bribe. Mm. And because I refuse to pay a bribe, uh, they detained me in the airport for 30 hours. For 30 hours, I was treated like a criminal. And uh, just because I refused to pay that bribe. And after 30 hours, they deported me back to India. Oh, so you could not attend that I concert? I could not. They waited, waited, waited. And then they left. Okay. And I even spent $150 worth of money on phone calls, oh. trying to call the Indian embassy. Trying Whereas to call you could have easily paid $50 Correct. as a bribe. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But my whole thing is my character is more important than trying to finish Escape a goal. Something, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you hold for more than 14 passports. Yes, and, correct. And does, it, does this tag represents a story around it? Yes, yes, my passports. And that's why I still carry my passports yes. because, you know, otherwise, why would you want to carry your passport? It's yes. extra luggage for you. Right. But yeah, every passport has a story. And okay. when people look at these passports, even yeah. at the immigration counter, counter itself, they would just straight away ask me, you know, where, why did you go here? Why did you go here? Which is this country? They've never heard of countries like this. Uh -huh. And then like Antarctica, they'll say, is this just a stamp or did you really go to Antarctica? I said, yes, I went and performed in Antarctica. Yes. They'll say, I've never, one guy in the US uh, immigration, he said, I've been here for 17 years. Yeah. And this is the first time I'm meeting somebody who's been to Antarctica. And you know, it just for me, my mission starts off right at the point yeah. of arriving into a country. Uh, so you also run a counseling cafe, yes. I think it's in Bangalore. Uh, so uh, why I'm asking this, because our audience is, you know, uh, the aspiring entrepreneurs, the new age people. And what is what would be more important to understand is what are the those most common problems they come up with? And what do you have you have been able to comprehend that why they are unhappy? Hmm. So let's understand their happiness index or the or the reasons behind their being unhappy or happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, see, there are two major factors of unhappiness that we have come across so far. Our cafe is called Chai 316 and it is uh, eight years old and it is predominantly designed for college students. Okay. You know, that's our age group is between 18 to 25. Having said that, we have had uh, business uh, professionals come there. We have had actors come there for counseling. But two factors which I've seen has contributed towards unhappiness is uh, one is the love for money. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, because love for money equals greed. Okay. See, it is one thing for you to uh, earn, but if you are so driven that I want money and money and money, then you're willing to sacrifice any extent that the word no does not exist in your dictionary. But I would say the people or, or the person who's thinking about the money aspect, they'll have to decide that, okay, uh, it is important, but how they can make it, the ways are important, Correct. right? Yeah. The route they take, mm -hmm. that is important. Correct. And, uh, the greed 
I, I don't think uh, there there'll be an issue with the greed also. till the time you're not committing any uh, crime or you're not going mm-hmm. on the on the wrong path see but the problem here is there is no cap for example you want to make a million dollars mm. okay good you reach your million dollars you, you have to be grateful and thankful and but the problem here is as soon as they're approaching closer to that without even celebrating they just want to stretch themselves i want more and more for example the stocks or the crypto or anything like that okay. you know they're not able to sleep well in the night because constantly every hour they have to get up and check these things because they they are they just want more and more and more and more but there has to be a cap for anything so that is where for me that cap is the greed if the cap is not there is where mm. greed creeps into it then you will not be able to even enjoy a nice holiday because it's always about how much can i how much can i make the other aspect is the relationships okay and that is another issue that has uh, uh that has led people into mm-hmm. uh mental health issues is they have not had strong bond relationships because most of their relationships are based on benefits yeah friends with benefits yes, these days yes exactly yeah. so and as a result they are not able to trust that relationship because the whole thing is what does this person want from me well it starts with the family first of all a lot of them are coming out of uh, single parent homes mm. that is a bigger uh, becoming a bigger issue right now is uh, that is one and as a result you know either the father or the mother is missing mm-hmm. and it is affecting psychologically the child's upbringing and uh, and that and as a result the way they are handling relationships uh, is also they carrying the pain and the hurt from the family situation into a relationship with another one now the the, the other problem is there is no love in the family mm. you know it is like for example uh, in our indian culture a father is only a fear factor you know yeah. mother becomes the love factor but father is the fear factor which is so wrong because the father god designed father and mother in this child's life to also express love so when something goes wrong they'll say i will tell your father yeah. then so the father becomes the villain yeah <laughs> which is not right no and so a lot of the times we have seen when these young people come to express and share they they're just like they they have a big problem the way that they have grown in the family and for some of them they don't even want to go back home during vacation time so yes. you would say the teenager or these people want someone to listen to their problems yes. their grievances yes. you know their aspirations yeah. also yeah and also uh, one thing that i've seen is many of our kids have not been taught how to handle freedom and independence Okay. freedom yeah. and independence yes okay. both so they have been sheltered so much that suddenly they come to a city like bangalore and they are staying in pgs or hostels or this so one. they are independent and yeah. have freedom too freedom and they don't know how to handle that freedom and that independency uh, whereas when i see in the west right at a very young age they have been taught how to handle freedom and independence whereas here you know till 16 or 17 we shelter the children so much that suddenly when they get the freedom uh, you know they don't know how to they handle it they want to it. fly immediately yes, exactly to, and cloud nine and yeah that becomes a tough thing yeah okay what i see is that uh, through your cafe you give them a space i would say mm. to express their feelings and problems also yeah we for us actually we we have a policy mm-hmm. within our staff circles we say 80% listening and 20% talking okay so we listen first thing we do is we listen to people as soon as somebody walks in you know our motto is we serve chai along with a friend mm-hmm. our cafe is a 400 seat cafe and it is a state of the art cafe but it's not a commercial cafe okay we only serve tea mm-hmm. and the price of the tea is decided by the customer and we anyone who walks in 
we serve them with chai along with a friend clock and you have counselors for that yes we are, our staffs we are all we all take multiple roles oh, we work okay. as a waiter and we work as a counselor we are all you know we wear multiple hats do you think uh, the peer pressure or the lust of having those relationship is yes. a major reason behind very it very much very much because they they, they look at everybody if he is having a girlfriend yes. or she is having a boyfriend i yeah. also need to have i must have yeah they yeah. just and and sadly they think that that's the coolest thing to do yeah that that's that's yeah. what but when whenever we have sat down mm. and we have talked logical reasoning and it has made like one girl she was a medical student and uh, and the guy also was a medical student and he just decided that he went and told the girl i'm sorry i don't think we should continue this relationship because we have goals in in our lives and our goals demand a lot more time and yeah. i don't think and both of them amicably decided to give up that relationship so that they can go and pursue being a doctor and both of them have done really well so that then uh, you know it boils down to a situation where people have to take a conscious call to decide when exactly you want to enter into a relationship i tell people the best time to get into a relationship is a time when you're ready to get married uh, okay uh, uh, that is my thing you know i got married when i was 40 okay you know until then i was traveling extensively so with my travels 9 9 months in a year Fifty hmm. countries, about three hundred concerts a year. I was doing with that kind of a schedule. I knew that I will not have time for a relationship, and I waited till I finished the task what I had in front of me, and then when it was time to get married, uh, I met my wife. She's from Nagaland. I met her in uh, Lonavla. Oh, okay. And uh, a friend of mine introduced her. Uh, we chatted. on uh, whatsapp and within 5 days we decided we'll get married mm. and within 2 months we got married and we have a lifetime to get to know each other yeah these days the 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 theory is different yeah. people say before getting married they want to understand uh, each other first then they want to enter into any relationship for that fact see and and the problem here is they are spending so much time getting to know each other yeah. that after marriage there's nothing else left for them to explore with each other okay. you know so i tell people yes it is good to know each other but you don't need a lifetime to get to know each other before you make a commitment mm. to get married can you please share with us one memorable encounter of yours on your global journey yeah yeah uh well one such uh, encounter would be in a island called pitcan island Okay. Now this is quite far. Uh it is in the Pacific Island. Okay. It is so far it's it, basically it is after Fiji and after French Polynesia there's Tahiti and then so Pitcairn Island is so far that from the nearest airport it takes 2 days by boat. Mm. But the boat is available once in 3 months. Okay. Okay so I went uh there and then how do you come back? Same the boat uh, the same boat brings you but if you miss that boat then you are in deep trouble you have to wait so minimum months. four months travel is required for for that place no no the, the same boat which takes you waits there okay and brings you back okay so i planned uh, this one year in advance and when i reached there uh, i was doing a concert for the community and at the concert the organizer came and said Benny this is the largest gathering we ever had and but when i looked it's a small hall it was a a, a church hall and uh, i could literally count the number of people Correct. i said what do you mean by the largest gathering and uh, they said well uh, 80% of the country has come to see you i said <laughs> what he said the population of the country is 66 people and around 54 people have come to see you so that is 80% of the country <laughs> and for me that was really memorable to okay. see how a tiny little island uh, we can have an experience mm. something like that oh that's yeah. wonderful to know uh, you have done so many performances and i was reading through uh, but i read one very different thing which is you performed in north korea yeah <laughs> on the uh, 100th birth anniversary of kim il sung of yeah of the founder of the nation so at the same time i'm curious to understand you know that how that happened yeah. you know and we hear that 
North Korea is such an isolated kind of place where people would like to refrain uh, from going there and be there in their own world. So how was that? Yeah. See, when I first went to North Korea and I came back, I went to Delhi. Yeah. So the visa officer who had called me to say that your visa has been approved, is that's when I came to know that there was uh, a diplomatic representation in India. So when I came back uh, from my first visit, uh, our first visit I went as a tourist, mm. right? So I went and I took my guitar and I played a song for the visa officer and uh, and he liked it and uh, I, I told him that I, I enjoyed my time. And then he said, you know, in 2012 is going to be the 100th birth anniversary of the founder, uh, Kim Il Sung, and they're having this April Spring Festival where they have artists from all over the world coming. And he said, you know, I want to pitch in your name for, to that, represent event. for that event. I said, I would love to. And he said, I can't make any promises, but you send all the details you have, your videos and everything, and I'm going to send it to the government. And they but uh, I heard they don't have internet or all of those the things? Government has. The, yeah, the, the yeah, government yeah. has. The officials okay. have all that uh, oh, information. Okay. Okay. It is only the public... The general public the, doesn't yeah, have. Yeah, general public, they don't have that access, actually. Oh, okay. So uh, I sent everything, and then after six months or so, I get a letter saying that... Uh, they have uh, chosen me to represent India. So it's a country-to-country -country relationship, yes, I would exactly, say. Yes, exactly, yeah. Okay. And, and then policemen became the route for you to go there. Exactly. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, I, I've just had an amazing experience. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, yes, freedom is limited. Everything is watched mm. carefully. You can't just do whatever you want. But uh, having said that, uh, you know, Every country has its own pros and cons. But on the whole, yeah. I did have a good uh, experience right. uh, in performing in North Korea. Okay, your uh, book, uh, Unthinkable, is a travelogue yes. series. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, very quickly, if you can tell us about it so that people can also, can they will read about it for yeah. sure. But just suggest and what they can derive from that. Correct. Yeah. Well, my book is called Unthinkable and it is 32 stories from 32 countries. Okay. And uh, these are uh, stories uh, from every aspect. It is not just only stories of my greatness, mm. but it is also the stories of my failures, stories where, um, you know, I've, I've missed the boat, I've missed uh, some principles in life. But on the whole, it is uh, uh, it, it is something that can inspire people to aspire, as well as people have told that after reading the book, uh, they just start to uh, go back to the point of purpose, and they started to have meaning mm -hmm. to what they want to do with their lives. Okay. And and it's a miracle for me to write a book first of all because I'm one of those I struggle to read and write even now. I, I like books where you have more pictures and less words, you know. Oh, okay. So, but during COVID is when I was able to put this book together. Okay. And there are about 191 photographs in this book from my travels. And so many times my friends have told that many, the pictures has given a beautiful meaning to your story. And they say that we almost feel like we are there uh, while traveling, uh, while your travels are going on. Thank you very much for sharing all these yes. uh, journeys with you. I'm moving to a rapid fire round now. Yeah. And I would request if you can give us quick answers to that. Yeah. So, favorite country you have ever visited? Singapore. Okay. Uh, a country you haven't visited and is on your list? There's no country. I've been to every country on earth. Most challenging performance location? I would uh, say Antarctica. Okay. Because of the cold. Favorite instrument besides your own? I musical love, instrument. Uh, I love the soprano saxophone. Okay, we would like to understand what are the top three items that you are, that are always in your travel bag. It is my passport, my guitar and my Bible. Oh, uh, okay. One thing you miss about home when traveling? It's uh, the fellowship with my mom and dad and my sisters. The relationship. Relationship, or <laughs> yes. Best food you have tested, tasted on your journey? Thai food. Thai food, yes. okay. Most inspiring musician you have collaborated with? Phil Kegi. 
actually cakey uh, your go to stress relief activity talk to people biggest lesson learned from traveling the world never give up if not a musician what career would you have pursued i would have pursued uh, a motivational speaker which you which uh, i'm still <laughs> doing <actually. laughs> running that cafe again you know <laughs> yes a quirky talent or a skill about you that not many people know about oh there's nothing everyone knows my life now <laughs> favorite travel app you can't live without travel app yeah i would say uh, ease my trip with oh, which okay. i book all my tickets actually <laughs> uh, are they sponsoring you no no <laughs> i don't know whether they know that i use their app or what but any pre show rituals uh ah. do you follow when you go no, to perform no nothing if your life were a movie what would it be titled it would be titled unthinkable unthinkable great thank you very much for this wonderful conversation uh, we look forward to more and see uh, i'll see you when i'm in bangalore yes thank, thank you, you so much. much and to our incredible audience thanks very much for your continued love and support keep on watching decoding growth with raman share like and subscribe for more inspiring conversations until next time keep growing thank you